be the British thing we sing tonight. Hallelujah. For a long time, I really wasn't everything God wanted me to be as a Christian. Has there ever been a time in your life when, when you just didn't feel very close to God? That God was just, oh, so far away. And f for some reason, you, even though you're a Christian, you just didn't feel as close to Him as you wanted to feel. That's a lonely feeling, my friend, for God to be far away. I felt that way. But you know, if, if you're close to someone, you have a lot of fellowship and there's a lot of communication. And we, as we have traveled across America, we have found this problem with Christians is very, very prevalent today. People don't feel as close to God. And you know, I think we know why. There are a lot of areas that I am inadequate. But where most of us are missing the boat in our Christian lives is God's Word. If I walked out to you tonight and said, Hey, my name is Roger, and I don't want you, to, you and I to be very close friends. We communicate a lot. But my friend, if you wait for your phone to ring with God on the other end, you'll wait a long time. Don't wait around your mailbox expecting a card with a return address of heaven either. God's got something to say. And He says it in His Word. That's the way God speaks to you. And do you know, you know how you speak to Him? In your prayer life. If I ask you to raise your hand tonight, uh, if you're a Christian, I do not doubt that the majority of you would raise your hand very, very high. But now listen, Christian, carefully. When was the last time you told Jesus you loved Him? When was the last time you got away from it all, closed the door to the outside world, and just said to Him alone, Jesus, I want you to know that I love you, and I want to thank you for what you've done and for what you've meant to me in my life. Most of us pray prayers like this, Oh, God, if you'll just give me some money. God, if you'll just... Let me have that car. God, if you'll just give me that house or let me have that job or if you'll let me date that girl or if you'll let me make first team, God, just give me, give me, give me, give me. 
when most of us should be saying, thank you, thank you, thank you. All of us have more than we deserve anyway. Hey, I don't even know why Jesus loves me. I'm basically a very unlovable person. But he loved me in spite of myself. About two and a half years ago, I got into God's Word consistently. It has been an incredible thing in my life. I was always too busy for God, you see. I was always involved in a lot of activities and doing a lot of things. And if I had time, sometimes I'd even get into the Word. Most of us read a little on Saturday night so we can check the blank on Sunday. Listen, friend, I found out God had something to say on Mondays and on Tuesdays and on Thursdays. Hey, when was the last time you got in the Word? Well, I can just hear a dad now. Hey, you know, I go to work and I've got this family and my kid plays ball and, and uh, I'm trying to do this, I'm trying to do that. I just don't have time to do that consistently. And here's a mom over here who's saying, well, I've got to get the kids off to school and I'm working. We've got to clean the house, help the kids with their homework. I've got all this shopping to do. I really am so busy that I don't have time. And here are young ladies who spend more time rolling their hair than they do in God's Word. Hey, if you're too busy for the Word, friend, you're just too busy. You're just too busy. God needs to speak to us consistently. And it's relevant to what's happening to you today. Jesus is more contemporary than tomorrow. And it seems that every day I change with the wind. But I'm glad I serve the Lord who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. His consistency just knocks me out. He is a beautiful Lord. And He loves me. And He loves you. If you don't feel as close to God as you ought to feel, my friend, it's not God's fault. James says when we draw close to God, God will draw close to us. In James, the fourth chapter in the Living Bible, it says something when I read it the first time, it startled me. Because most of us know what this is about. In the 17th verse, it says, Knowing what is right to do and not doing it is a sin. I have a great friend. He's been a friend of mine for a long time. His love for Jesus has meant much to me in my life. He was giving our Bible study this year before we left. And on the last day, he closed the Bible. And he looked at us and said, Truth. He said, Truth, God will never use you publicly until he tutors you privately. And you know, my friend, that applies to you because most of us have an awful lot of homework to do. Hey, I got three little boys in my house. I wish you could see them. Jeremy is two, and Jason is three, and John is seven. And they usually come and sit on the first row. And you know, they're the kind of fellas, if you'd buy one of our albums back there, they'd see you, and they'd run up to you and say, Hey, Go get that fellow over there to sign your record. Say, he's my dad. They love me, and, and I love them. And I got about the prettiest blonde-headed wife you've ever even seen. And those boys love me, and I love them very much. But you know, friend, God didn't have three boys. God had one. And God gave all he had for me. If I thought I had to sacrifice one of my boys for you, I, I'd probably just grab him in my arms and run far away. But Jesus said, Roger, I love you. And then he demonstrated his love for me when he died at Calvary. But I'm glad we're not here tonight to sing about a dead man, aren't you? Because Jesus is not dead, my friend. He rose again. And because of that... This song says, now I can face tomorrow. Now all fear is gone. And it just keeps saying that life is worth a living because he's dead. No, my friend, because he lives. <laughs>